Uh, an absolute pleasure to have with me Dave Grohl. Welcome to New Zealand again, my friend. Thank you. It's good to be back. Uh, not the best start to your welcome back to New Zealand. You're just telling us you, you hurt your finger, but well, you know, you know, I'm on the road to recovery. Yeah. And it doesn't. You know, I can I can pretty much sustain any injury as long as I have Advil and whiskey. Yeah. And so that's kind can of. Can you bring Advil here? Yeah. Yeah. Advil's just ibuprofen. Oh, right. So I just take that. Yeah. Three of those. I have a little cup of ice next to me. And then I drink a little bit of whiskey. So you went to the doctor and you, you, you've hurt your finger and he popped it for you today? Well, actually, I was just telling someone else that um, he did, he popped my finger. But uh, the guy, the doctor that came over, he came to the hotel, he was totally cool. Yeah. He's a really nice guy. He's also a surgeon. And he uh, told me that he also listens to Foo Fighters music <laughs> when he does surgeries. <laughs> so like he's had people open on the table, <laughs> jamming door. Did, is that a weird thing, do you think? It's the first time I've ever heard anyone say Usually people say like, Oh, um, we ever long was the song at my wedding. Yeah, and this guy's like, no, man, I do full. I've like had someone's heart in my hand while I listen to your song. Because I remember you saying uh, when you made the the song for the miners in Australia that right. that was the first time that you'd sort of thought instead of us jumping around on stage, yeah. uh, it, it meant obviously something you know on a deeper level. So that's taking that shit yes. a little bit further. It's the first for everything. What's <laughs> next? I can't imagine. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Dave, I had the pleasure of uh, of seeing you a few times now, but the last time about a year and a half ago at Wembley Stadium and you just... No way! Yeah. Wow. I was on the first time overseas and had managed to get tickets for that and oh, no. unreal show. You just played the two songs with John Paul Jones and, and Jimmy Page yeah. and up there and you said, welcome to the greatest day of my life. Is, yeah. is that still being the best day? Um, well, it kind of keeps getting better and better, <laughs> not good. Uh, yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a big deal, those Wembley shows for us because you know, the Foo Fighters are a really simple band. Yeah. I think that um, we don't really operate any differently than we did when we first began yeah. 16 years ago or whatever. It's still the same and we're like this little family and the crew is like family and now, you know, we've been through ups and downs and a lot of stuff together and to see it finally sort of get to that point mm. where it it's just unimaginable something that's to us, it's just, it's entirely real, you know? It's not, <clears throat> I look at us differently than I do, like, maybe some other bands that are at that level. Mm. I feel like, you know, we've always been rooted in this thing that's really simple and really real, and um, and our intentions are the same, and so that was like a really emotional thing, that, like our families were there, and like our parents were there, and just, it was, it was really, it was a trip. Um, but you know, so now, but now I'm in a band with John, yeah. and that's something that I'm reminded of every night when yeah. we go up and we start playing. It's like I look over at John, I'm like, oh my god, I'm in a band with John Paul Jones. Yeah, well, I mean, it's pretty well documented that John Bonham was one of your favorite drummers of all yeah. time. Is it weird playing, you know, making up the rhythm section of new bands that, no. that was from one of your favorite bands, or is that sort of past now? And and I guess secondly to that as well, I want to know. Is this always been part of the Dave Grohl master plan? To have a band like this to be back behind the drums? You know? I wish I had a plan. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, yeah, I've played the drums a lot with different people over the last maybe six or seven years. Mm -hmm. But I've never really committed to something like this. Um, but, you know, John, it, it's, there's a difference between playing with someone that you just enjoy playing with uh, or playing with someone um, whose music had a huge a huge part of your life like mm. John's music I grew up listening to Led Zeppelin like that was I'm not a religious person so like the yeah. Beatles and Led Zeppelin were yeah. like my church you know yeah. so I listened to those records and that's they just created this whole other world for me which is amazing and it kind of taught me how to be a musician so to play with John, you know, John plays like John plays. Led Zeppelin sounds like John, you yeah. know? So the way John plays the bass and, or the keyboards or slide guitar or whatever, mandolin, all of that is a part of Led Zeppelin. So when you're jamming with him, you hear, you hear that influence, you know? And, um, and sometimes, it, you know, it's a little freaky because you just can't imagine that something so awesome could ever happen to you, you know? Yeah. But it's great. I, I can't... I can't imagine another another band that I'd want to be in besides the two that I'm in. You know, awesome. 
Foo Fighters, I guess people are always going to want to know listening, um, was it a plan for a while between you and the rest of the band to, to have a break like you're having now? Yeah. Was it something that was always going to be happening? Yeah, yeah. Well, we would never taken a substantial break before. This is the longest we've ever taken between albums. Yeah. And we're already planning to go back in the studio, so yeah. I know when we're going to go back in and we've already started working on music. But, um, yeah, it's important, I think, for everyone just to sort of like step back and take a breather. Because the five years leading up to that Wembley gig, they were, it was just non-stop for yeah. five years. And it all, you know, it paid off. The shows got bigger and better, and it was really great. But, like, at the end of the day, I've been touring around since I was 18. I'm 41 now. So that's, like, a big part of my life that I've just spent, like, <laughs> doing this. And it's awesome. I love doing it. But I have kids, you know. Mm. I miss my family and my wife and my sister. And, you know, there's part of me that's like, God, I'd hate to sort of wake up and see the rest of my life has just yeah. passed me by and I've been mm. focusing so much on this because I feel like there's this balance you have to find mm. between doing this and that and it's hard because it's mm. like oh god it's so much fun to play with this band is it, is it too hard to I guess you don't really want to uproot your wife and your kids and bring them on tour like not that's really. not the answer no I mean they you know the older they get they need to be yeah. They need to have their own lives and right. do their thing, you know. So it's so my life has changed a lot. Like when I was eighteen, I go on the road for five months at a time. Yeah. And I don't go out for more than two weeks now. Yeah. So when I go home I have a month off and you know Yeah. Rest. Yeah, it changes everything. Rest your old bones, Dave. It's true, dude. You have no idea. <laughs> Get my ass kicked out here. <laughs> I imagine that you must be you know, like I was stoked to be thinking that I was gonna ha have a chance to interview. You must be surrounded continually with yes people. You know, everybody kissing your ass. I met my, my wife. <laughs> Who says no to Dave, bro? Uh, well, the first person to say, the one that says no to me the most is my daughter, Violet. <laughs> she's almost four years old, so yeah. she, she's just, a, you know, she, she'll just say no. <laughs> just no. And, uh, you know, there's a, I, I'm happy to say that I've, that the people that I work with, I've worked with for, like my monitor guy. Yeah. He's been my monitor guy for 19 years, yeah. you know. Um, my guitar tech, BB, or uh, our tour manager, Gus, or whatever. Like, we have people that we've been working together with for 10, 15, 20 years, you know. Yeah. And once you establish that kind of relationship with the people that you're working with, it's like, you know, you're not, they're not kissing my ass because they think I'm someone else or I'm the boss. Yeah. It's like, we're like, family. Yeah. So I get shot down right and left all the time. Like, you know, <laughs> my manager, John, I've only had one manager ever. And uh, so with him, it's been 20 years. And I ask him, like, could I please do this? And he'll just say, <laughs> no. I'm like, mm. <laughs> uh, so, hey, uh, I haven't got long in this chat, so I've just got a couple of um, quick fire questions to ask you and three questions from listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's from an Alpanapa of the North Shore. And she says, hi, Dave. I enjoy getting hammered in the spa and listening to music. What's, what's your favorite type of booze? Well, at one point it was the Crown Royal. Yeah. You know, but, which is a nice Canadian blended whiskey. Uh, <laughs> but that would make me do like fucking crazy shit. <laughs> so then, then I, wound up, and then I got on like this Jägermeister kick for a while. Yeah. And that just, that makes you do stupid Mind blanks. I, yeah. Many nights, many yes. mornings we wake up going, I don't really I don't know what happened. It's bad. Yeah. Then I got really into this Icelandic schnapps, yeah. this stuff called Brennevin, which is insane. It's like Jägermeister, except <laughs> times a million and it makes you like the Hulk. But now I'm sort of started, the, now I'm kind of more of a wine I was person. Gonna, I was going to yeah. say, have you, have you gone on to the red wine? I have. I pre-show I might have a few beers or whatever, yeah. Yeah. but if I'm, if I'm going to have a night, like last night, I just sort of had a couple bottles of wine. So. Yeah. This is from a P. Ego of Devonport, it says, G'day Dave, uh, how do you find the best way of dealing with seeing yourself on TV all the time? Well, I don't watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> just turn it off. I just don't. Right. I honestly don't. This is from R. Farrelly of Oriwa. Hi Dave, I also sing in a band like you do, um, but mine is much more shit. What is the best tip for encouraging my female fans to show their affection more? Live? You just gotta write a love song. 
I swear to God, <laughs> it's the only way to do it. If you ask him, what does he want me to tell him to take off his shirts and shit? He <laughs> could do that now. Now you have to, the only way to get girls to crawl all over you is to write like the best romantic love song possible. You've written a few love songs. I've had a few girlfriends too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, quick fire with Dave. Paul McCartney wanted to be in them Crooked Vultures, true or false? False. It's kind of, I mean, I went out to dinner with them one yeah. night while we were working on this project. Yeah. And, uh, and it was my wife and I and he and his girlfriend and, and he said, well, what have you been up to? And I said, what? I said, I'm actually Did you have to pay? After no, he, and he actually said that, like, I think his girlfriend even said to my wife before dinner, like, you know, we're taking care of the girl. Like, you got it, man. That's great. But, uh, but I told him about the project, and he yeah. said, well, if you need any extra bass players or whatever, yeah. he just sort of jokingly offered. Do you prefer being front man or drumming? I like them both. They're both kind of fun. I mean, you know, right now, yeah. being a drummer, it's hard to imagine being the front man. But uh, it's fun, man. I mean... You know, the good thing about playing the drums is that I don't have to do anything but beat the piss out of my drums every night. Yeah. And I mean, I'm in the best shape I've been in in years, and it's super fun. It's like dancing, you know, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Um, but being a front man, it's like when you establish, like at that stadium at Wembley, yeah. there were 85,000 people yeah. there. But I felt like I could talk to the people all the way up in the. Yeah. So if you can establish that kind of connection with an audience and make it feel like I'm here for every one of them, yeah. it's the greatest feeling in the world. And I'm usually my best stand up is done in front of like 10,000 people. <laughs> uh, ever going to be another Probot album? No. No. Best show you've ever played? Um, I don't know. Foo Fighters, probably. Um, well, you know, we played at the Super Top thing here yeah. one time, and I swear to God, that was one of the most outrageously loud shows we've ever played. The audience was so loud that the road crew were plugging their ears in between songs. It was insane. It was really, really nuts. Your favorite Kiwi band? Um... Well, we're all fans of the Dotsons, you know, we've known them. I haven't seen them in ages. I think some of them are coming tonight. And John produced one of their records, mm. John Paul Jones. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it's funny because because when those guys were little kids, they snuck into a Foo Fighters show. I think, I don't know if it was here, if it was Christchurch or Wellington, I can't remember. But they snuck into, in 1996, <laughs> we were sitting after the show, and these little kids come in. I swear they were like 13 years old. Yeah. Like, we snuck in, don't kick us out, we snuck in, don't kick us out. We're like, no, that's cool. And then years later, like a long time later, we did a TV show in England, and the, a couple of the guys from the Dotsons come up and they say, I don't know if you remember, but we were those little kids that snuck into your show. I was like, no way. <laughs> awesome. Uh, f final question Who would win in a fight between a great white shark and a lion? Between a great white shark and a lion? Mm. Are we talking on land or in water? Neutral. Neutral territory? Yeah. I'm thinking shark, man. They have rows of teeth. Yeah. Yeah. You're one of the, you find it strange that you're one of the only people that have gone shark in all the tally of all of the bands. Most people tend to say lion. That's ridiculous. How could a lion, <laughs> that's the stupidest, really? Yeah. People are dumb. Yeah. Really? A shark, a great white shark. Yeah. What is going to, what could yeah. possibly? Maybe it might explain your success given that you've, that you've chosen that as an answer, Dave. Thanks, man. Yeah, That's like a psychological profile, <laughs> isn't it? Hey, it's uh, been an absolute pleasure it's interviewing nice you. Yeah. And interviewing you and all the best with you. You come to the show? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Awesome, bro.